beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Christmas was first celebrated on... In the year 336, under the rule of the Roman Emperor Constantine. Deck the halls with bells of holly. The word Christmas was first used almost to a thousand years ago. Tis the season to be jolly. Over 160 countries celebrate Christmas worldwide. the children and poor. The people in Han loved him too and called him Sinterklaas, which is short for Saint Nicholas. In America, we call him Saint Nick or Santa Claus because of a poem that begins, "'Twas the night before Christmas." <laughs> Santa Claus may have come from a Turkish monk. We can thank the Scandinavian writers living in the 1800s for the legend of Santa's elves. These writers produced the idea that the elves, who are believed to be both helpful and mischievous mystical creatures, were actually Santa's secret helpers. 
In America, Australia, and some other countries, boys and girls wait for Santa Claus to bring presents on Christmas Eve. But it's not like that everywhere in the world. Let's explore the season by traveling the globe. One wish the world a Merry Christmas, simple as that may sound. I want to tell the world my Christmas wishes spread good tidings all around. Introduced traditions that are celebrated around the world. In 19, 1892, Alexander Dumas Pierre's an adaptation of the Nutcracker story by E.T.A. Hoffman was set to music by Tchaikovsky. The music was well received, however, the ballet did not receive popularity until it premiered in New York almost 100 years later. Now, you can find numerous premieres of the Nutcracker all across the United States.
Christmas Carol that comes to us from America. The story of a poor boy who gives the only gift he has to the baby Jesus was first recorded by the Austrian Trap family, the same ones mentioned in The Sound of Music. There are so many wonderful Christmas songs, and we'd like to invite you to sing along with some of our favorites. <laughs>
again, let's let's uh, thank Katie and our friends from the Bay Area Performing Arts and Casting and the Cypress Meadows House Band. Uh, they've been working really hard on this program, and uh, it's been it's been awesome. And we're going to get back to that here in just a moment. We, we kind of planned this brief little intermission because we wanted to take just a moment to welcome you to Cypress Meadows today as part of this special uh, Christmas Fest weekend. And, of course, in just a few moments, at the end of this service, we're going to uh, release you to go out to the patio to enjoy more of the bounce houses and, uh, and, and free hot chocolate and donuts and the petting zoo and all of that. But before we do that, though, we wanted to take a moment to, to just uh, do something that we do every Sunday that's part of just our time of worship and, and celebration here at Cyprus. We, we set aside some time to just um, honor God and to, to express our devotion to him, our worship and our celebration for all that he's done in our lives as we surrender to him our, our tithes and offerings. And so we're going to do that together over these next few moments. I'm going to invite our, our uh, team to come forward with the baskets and begin passing those. And if you're visiting with us this weekend, we don't want you to feel any undue pressure in this moment. We would just invite you to, to give as you feel led. Uh, but while that's happening, I do want to uh, share with you just another reminder of something that's happening here as we wind down the year. Uh, we are in the midst of our year-end offering. We've been talking about this for the past several weeks, and uh, it's a big deal. And I want to highlight just a couple of things briefly because it is uh, so important as we step into this, that we meet our goal of, of $65,000 that we're hoping to raise through this year-end offering because every single one of those dollars is going to go outside the walls of Cypress Meadows to support some pretty, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go, a portion of that, let me rephrase that, a portion of that is going to go to support some things that are happening globally with a ministry that we're involved in in Kenya. And if you're part of the Cypress tribe, you know our relationship with Springs of Hope, Orphanage, and School. And so a portion of these year-end dollars are going to uh, fund and make sure sure that those kids over there have the resources they need to continue their education, to make it to the next grade, and they really truly do depend on us and, and our support for that. And so it's, it's critical that we step into it for that reason. But we're also looking at some pretty critical needs that we, and opportunities that we see as we reach the families in our community, and, and the opportunity that we have to upgrade what's happening here at Cypress Meadows with our kids ministry and our student ministries as we look at just our environments and classrooms and, and lobby spaces and programming and experiences that we want to create for our kids and students and even staff that we want to see come alongside our, our, our kids and students. And so uh, we're, we're looking at this year-end offering as a way to fund some pretty big dreams and goals and a vision that we have for 2023 uh, in our family ministries. And so all of that, with all of that in mind, I just uh, want to remind you and encourage you to step into this with us, to partner with us in all that God is doing globally and locally as you uh, consider, prayerfully consider how you're going to participate in the year-end offering this year because it truly is making a difference and uh, we're excited to see how God is going to use that. All right, well, a couple things that I want to highlight real briefly before we turn things back over to the team here. Uh, Saturday night, of course, is Christmas Eve. We've got two services planned, candlelight services at 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. We would love for you to plan now to be back here with us in one of those services, and it's going to be just an incredible time, uh, very meaningful, very reflective, and we're looking forward to that. And then as you leave this afternoon, and you make your way out to all the festivities, uh, make sure you stop by the shop that's on the patio. You'll notice those very colorful bags and other ornaments and things that are being sold there. That is all part of our ministry over in Kenya. Molly Waits is out there, and everything that you purchase at that shop is going to go to support the work that's happening at Springs of Hope. And so we encourage you to take a look and, and purchase something on your way out today. All right, with that, we're going to turn things back over to the team. Let's enjoy the second half of It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas. Thank you for joining us. Now let's travel through time. The decade is 1940, and Americans are in the middle of World War II. Decorations are kept sparse, and radio is king. In fact, you might have heard something like this if you tuned in. I really can't stay. Hey, it's cold outside. I have to go away. I can call you a ride. This evening has been. It's so very in. nice. Time spent with you is My mother will stop to worry. Call the car and tell him to hurry. My father will be chasing you. Wait, home. what do you still live at home so for? So really, I better scream. Your driver, his name is Murray. Maybe just a half a oh, drink. Oh, we're more. both adults, so who's keeping score? What will my friends think? I think they should rejoice. If I have one more drink, it's your body and your choice. You really know how. Your eyes are like starlight now. Cast a spell. One look at you and then I fell. I ought to say no, then no, you no, you really sir. ought to go, go, At go. least I'm gonna say that I tried. Hurry, you just pull the bounce side. Really can't stay. I understand, baby. Maybe it's cold outside. Maybe it's cold outside.
ornaments, and toy manufacturing in the States has taken off. The North American Aerospace Defense Command has launched an annual tradition of tracking Santa's sleigh. Electric lights can be seen outdoors, and you might even joke about seeing Mommy kissing Santa Claus. Popular singer Nat King Cole records this song in 1961, making it one of the most iconic Christmas songs of the century. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe Helps to make the seasons bright Tiny tots with their eyes all in glow
were cranking out Christmas albums, and this song was crowned an immediate Christmas classic.
as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black peel. You're a monster, Mr. Grinch. Your heart's an empty hole. Your brain is full of spiders with garlic in your soul, Mr. Grinch. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. And here we are, 2022. You might text or Snapchat Merry Christmas or FaceTime your friends or family across the world. Connected by technology, united by holiday tradition, we'll be celebrating both the new and the old. While jamming out to some classics, we'll also some pop tunes.
All right, um, I know that uh, bouncy houses and a petting zoo and uh, cosmic donuts await you in the patio, so I'll be really brief, okay? Yeah, I brought the thin notebook, not the thick notebook for this moment. All right, uh, you have just heard uh, the history of Christmas told in song, and uh, there is a combination of what might be labeled uh, secular and sacred songs. Uh, the church that I grew up in, uh, we were told you never, never can mix the secular with the sacred. And so the church I grew up in, we never would have heard some of these songs. And in fact, um, the pastor, uh, who was my pastor when I was a kid, if he wasn't dead already, this service would have done him in. <laughs> all right. But there is a message that is woven through all of these songs. And I hope you caught it. Now, there's one Savior of the world, Jesus. But there are many routes to Jesus. And that thought literally just blows my mind of the love and the creativity of a God who would use any means possible to be able to communicate his grace and his love to every single human being on this planet. So I know that there are a lot of church people who get caught up in culture wars with society, right, over the secularization of Christmas. Do we say Merry Christmas or do we say Happy Holidays? You better say Merry Christmas or it's one of these where you sneeze, right? Oh, and, and by the way, Jesus loves you. So I am one of these guys who really thinks that God is remarkably bigger than all of that. I believe God can use any means he chooses to communicate his grace and his love to open a portal for us to step into a relationship with him. So there's one lyric from one song uh, that I want to quickly focus on. And it said this, um, the wise men followed the star the way I followed my heart to you. Um, so this Christmas, um, my Jackie wanted to put a, a uh, nativity scene in our front yard, a crash, and we didn't have one. So did you know all you got to do is go to Amazon and you push a few buttons? <laughs> they take money out of your account, and like the next morning, boom, there it is. It's just crazy. But we, we got the, the, the cheap one, so it, it had a, a manger, a star, uh, Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus, and a donkey, and, and a sheep. Um, but the neighbors down the street, they always have to outdo everybody, <laughs> right? And they got the upgraded one, and yeah, you know those neighbors. And, and so that they, but they also, get, they got, um, I think it was the, the shepherds, angels, and the three wise men with their little crash. Remember the three wise men? Um, did you know the correct name for the wise men is not wise men, it's magi? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the Bible, uh, there's a section called the New Testament. It was all written in Greek, and I spent four years attempting to learn New Testament Greek. But the word that is used in the Greek is magi. And you may or may not know that magi comes from the same etymology as the word magician. Ooh, yeah, now some of you are a little shook up, aren't you? And, and, and so the church that I grew up in, um, magic was considered a naughty word. It was very, very secular. And uh, that God had nothing to do with magic nor magicians, I was told. So we did not talk about magi. We talked about wise men. Or we sang a song about kings, three, we three kings of Orient are, but we didn't say magi. But I did pass New Testament Greek, and I know the word is magi. So what in the world are three musicians doing in my neighbor's yard at Christmas? <laughs> right, right there in the, in the manger scene. What do you do with this? Well, the back story is this. Um, these three guys were not from the nation of Israel. They were from the Persian Empire. And they believed and worshipped in radically different ways than the Israelites did. Let that sink in. And what's more, these guys were not just astronomers who studied the stars. They were actually astrologers. That's right, astrologers, who really believed that somehow, someway, in, that the stars gave them insight into their fate. They believed that the gods, not God, the gods... They would reveal our destiny, write our destiny in the stars. So these magicians 
are seeking God in some very, very secular means. They see a star. They believe the star is going to lead them to the Savior of the world. And the Savior of the world is not even a part of their belief system, nor is the Savior a part of their culture. So that begs the question, why? Why would God send a, a star to some magicians? And why didn't God send a star to some Hebrew shepherds and to some Jewish religious leaders? Well, I think the answer is obvious. I think it's because the stars were the language in which these magicians were searching for God. God says, you're trying to find me in the stars? All right, how about we just meet there and I'll put a little star in the sky. Sometimes I think that we think that God can only communicate to others in languages and in ways that we are comfortable with. Sometimes I think that we think that when we start talking to somebody about Jesus, it's the very first time they've ever had a conversation with God. But let me be the first to break the news to you, if you don't know this, all right? You have never, ever initiated a conversation with anybody anywhere on this planet that God was not already speaking to them. Because God is always the initiator. Because God loves all people. And he's trying to find a way to communicate to everybody. So God has been talking to them long before you started talking to them. And God has this strange way of talking to us in the language we understand. So it was a number of Christmases ago that I was um, invited and asked to have a conversation with a man uh, who was an agnostic. And uh, it was of his invitation. So the two of us sat down, we began having this conversation, and he told me that um, what he really believed in was, was the universe, that when this universe was, came into existence, th there was this force that was created in this force, and this force works for our good. And he said that this, this force, the universe, it speaks to us like in our intuition, or sometimes there's like this little voice in our, in our spirit. And I said, that's just fascinating. I said, I wanted you to tell me more about it, but can, let me ask you a question because I'm really curious here. I said, have there ever been any of these moments when you just, I don't know, you just have find yourself in sort of a, a, a reflective sort of spirit and you got this almost haunting sense and there was almost like a voice that was saying to you, you know, there's got to be more to life than this. There's got to be more to life than this. And he said, well, yeah. I said, well, like in those in those moments, when you were feeling that, was there like a voice in your head that said, there is a God? And you said, no, there's not. And then he said, that was weird. Where did that voice come from? I said, do you think maybe it's possible that the universe that you believe in was speaking to you and trying to tell you there is a God that you have yet to believe in? God just meets us where we are. And God speaks to us in different ways, and God speaks to us in the language that we will understand who God is. So, if God meets you in this Christmas season in a Charlie Brown Christmas special, it's okay. Or if he meets you like he did me in that classic, It's a Wonderful Life, it's okay. So the Magi seek God. Um, and he meets them in a star in the sky, and the star takes them to a manger. And this is just a reminder for all of us. It doesn't matter where you come from. It matters where you're going. There is one Savior of the world, Jesus. But there are many routes and many ways to him. So God speaks to three magicians of a whole different culture, different belief system and tells them that God is stepping into human history and his name would be Jesus. And so they followed this star. Sometimes what you believe is way less important than who you are seeking and they were seeking God and God found them. So in this season, all the signs will point you to Jesus. The trees, the lights, the songs, the gifts, Everything will point you to Jesus. And the question is, are you going to follow those signs? Because if you follow those signs, 
they're going to take you to Jesus, the one who came for you, the one who gave his life for you. So don't just connect to Christmas this year. Connect to Jesus. And you do that, friends, with a simple prayer. Jesus, I give my life to you. I mean, every relationship begins somewhere, and that's where it begins. Jesus, I give my life to you. Now, there's a lot of other things you and Jesus will have to talk about, but relationships start somewhere, and that's where relationship with him begins. If you've never done that, it really is... I mean, I've helped thousands of people enter in this relationship, and it just begins with, Jesus, I give my life to you. And so this Christmas, maybe, just maybe like the Magi, you've been seeking for God, and you've been looking for a sign, and maybe that sign for you was in one of these songs or in this conversation I'm having with you now. But give your life to Jesus. Everything in Christmas is rooted in the gift God gave to you in His Son. Give your life to him. He'll give his life to you. All right, I'm going to invite our team back up, and we're going to wrap this up with one more song. Thanks for being with us. Yeah.